What is up, everyone? Good morning to you all. We're back at it, uh, this time with some Run 8. It's been a long time since we've been in Run 8, and we had a viewer uh, make a request that we run the PO98 from Jacksonville up to Jessup, Georgia. So we're at least going to go to Jessup, maybe on up to Luluichi as well. Uh, we'll just have to kind of wait and see how the trip turns out. But uh, yeah, we're down in Jax. This is our PO98, and uh, we'll see about loading up and getting out of here. Uh, you guys will have to, uh, you'll have to bear with me. Like I said, it's been a long time since, uh, or at least a little while since I've done run eight. So let's get that release. Let's um, go ahead and put her in forward. Give her a little bit more wiper here. There are windows open. We definitely need those open so we can hear everything. And uh, let's see, let's make sure we got auto up. Move that real fast. Yes, auto is good. And I think our channel is going to be 94 tone 8. Let's do that really fast. Get our light on. All right, we're on channel 94. Let's do DTMF star 8. They were kind of a mood autos in today. Dispatchers, you know, they're kind of moody people. A little bit. All right, request the signal. So we did contact him. That's good. Okie dokie. He sounds like he's in a pretty good mood, and we've got a slow clear. So let's go ahead and blast off out of here, guys. Open the throttle, and we'll release the independent. And release the big brake. I didn't even realize the big brake was applied. There we go. There a bell. A little bit of bell action here. All right, let's ease on out of here. It's uh, slow clear, so slow speed, 10 mile an hour on these tracks here. I think's what it was, 10 or 15, it's, it's 10 or 15. I can't remember. You know, that's the thing, like with the speed signals, you could get like a, a limited clear, right? But the switch may only be good for 40 or something like that. We had a lot of sightings that were like that back in the day. We had some that were, um, uh, medium switches, right? Medium into the siding, but they were only good for like 25 mile an hour, the actual switch. So there we go. All right, we'll ease on out of here. And we are 808 feet long. So not too terribly long. We'll count this off. Be out of there in no time. Let's go ahead and get our, uh, let's get tags up, Mapo's tags up, and let's do, um, our uh, our hud as well too there we go all right in game it says 15. okay we'll go with 15 for those tracks yeah i'll be the first to tell you guys i'm not really uh i'm not a passenger guy i'm not an amtrak guy i don't really have a problem with it i just don't know much about it i've always gravitated to the freight side of things all right there we go we're clear We'll stop counting you all. Start easing out. Probably got to be careful, right? We don't want to sling everyone to the back of the train. He's around here at Edgewood Drive. This is my own horn I made for the game. Uh, nothing spectacular, but it gets the job done. All right, we got our resume speed board right here. Oh, number two main. Count that off. It should, it should work out perfect. Uh, close enough. All right, so actually we're still, okay, there we go. Now we're 70 mile an hour train. I, 79 mile an hour train. I was like, wait a minute, it's not changing. All right, let's get going guys. We're gonna be rolling 79 mile an hour train. Double main up to Birch. And it should be a really good trip. Should be a good trip. I'm looking forward to this. Like I said, we don't do a lot of Amtrak. I do it from time to time, but uh, not a whole lot. Yeah, 
Amtrak PO 98, Scott Clear, South Tail number two, main 110 North out. I gotta get back in the groove. It takes me a minute to kind of get back into this. And so, like I said, we've been doing a lot of DCS lately. I know a lot of people have been unhappy with, with DCS, but I just, I enjoy it so much. And the thing about DCS is like, you go up on some of these servers and you never know what you're gonna get into. It's like every mission is completely different. You never know what you're gonna get into. All right, 79.2, that looks pretty good to me. By Moncrief Road. Yeah, you never know what you're gonna get into. It's like, it's never the same. It's like, you can go up one day and it could be the most mundane of missions ever. And then the next time it's like flying with your hair on fire. Like there's so much stuff going on. We're back in road eight. It's good to be back in road eight. I wanna do some more railroader too. We're gonna to get back in railroader. We might even take a peek at Into the Flames this week too. We'll have to see how it plays out. I, it's, it's, it's kind of a busy time for uh for spur because like my kids are wrapping up their school year uh they've got like a week left like this week and next week yeah like two weeks two weeks today but um it's a lot of stuff going on they've had uh my oldest daughter's had band competitions which they absolutely rock at their uh their concert competition they got uh outstanding for their class which is amazing almost overall outstanding almost overall they they uh they were second but uh pretty cool in my book all right let's slow up here getting a little bit fast amtrak po 98 has got a clear by densmore number two main 110 north outs i've got to remember not to call this csx i'm so used to csx it's going to be a real struggle not to do that. It's, it's like I have to make myself say Amtrak. So, uh, yeah, they had a band competition and uh, a concert. And then uh, we've got a track meet coming up. So, yeah, a track meet this week, actually, this Friday. So it's kind of uh, it's, it's kind of a busy week. So I'm, I, may, I may be posting. I may not. We'll just have to kind of wait and see how it plays out. All right, sweet. Good on that. Got another crossing coming up here. This went by Dinsmore where the pigs go in and out of uh, Duval Rep. Sometimes they don't go that way, though. I think a lot of people think the pigs on the north end just go in at Dinsmore, but that wasn't the way it always was. Like, sometimes they would uh, go, around, <clears throat> go around the Y and uh, go that way. Like they, and the reason why they would do that is because they would make a, uh, they make a set out at, uh, at Jack's Ramp or at uh, Moncrief, I'm sorry, Moncrief. They would make a set out there. So instead of going into Dinsmore, they would go all the way around. They'd call it taking the uh, Grand Tour, <coughs> which is pretty cool. I don't know if they still do that anymore or not. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, but. Yeah, it wasn't always, um, cut and dry as far as the pigs in uh in jacks like i said it's one of my regrets from railroading that i didn't take a pig down in jacks i had the opportunity to a few times but never did it amtrak po 98 has got a clear uh red dog number two made 110 north out all right we buy a red dog the whole point was back there at that road crossing Trains that are waiting to go into the ramp or Moncrief, they hold at that crossing back there so they wouldn't sew up the world as far as like blocking road crossings and stuff like that. Kind of a rainy, messy day, but typical Georgia. Typical South Georgia. Yeah, man, she's rolling. She get like a scalded dog, that is for sure. Oh, it's spawning in. Uh, it's auto spawning. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really want that. I don't really want that. Let's see. Can we do? Um, actually, let's see. Shift F two. There we go. AI traffic. 
There we go. Let's turn that off. We'll turn that off. Okay. Now we're set. I I don't do the auto spawn a lot. Once in the blue moon, I will. I, I like to have control over it myself. Like the trains, other than that one is spawning, we probably won't see him. But the trains that we meet were all done by me and kind of placed exactly like where I wanted them and how I wanted them to uh, move along the routes. Back out crawl a little bit here. We got an approach limited. I'm gonna stop for red. Yeah, I don't know why he stopped up there. We may have to check on that in a minute here. I think that's gonna be one up at uh Ludoichi. There we go, there's our first meet right there, nice. Seventy-eight point eight. I'll go with that. Amtrak PO ninety-eight. Sky clear. Rat lift number two. May one ten north outs. All right, coming by Rat lift. Got a uh, south battle number one main there. Oh, we had a road crossing for a second. That bridge kind of freaked me out. Nice, that's so cool. There we go, we're rolling. That's gonna be the Q455. Going to Taft. Well, this is kind of, uh, once again, early 2000s. I don't do much, uh, current day stuff because it's not it's not what I know I, I don't know anything about it this is based on a 455 from the early 2000s they used to have a bunch of auto racks on the bottom all right we buy the DD at Ratliff we're about to check on that other train here in a second see what he's doing uh, let's see Yeah, it's because the uh, AI dispatching it known. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Yeah, I never thought about it being on a double main. Were we okay? Yeah, we're no defects. All right, PO98, no defects. Bye, Ratliff. That's a problem I've never run into before in real life, like having multiple trains on a DD at the same time. Like, what are the odds? Amtrak PO 98 got a clear by Artesian number two main 110 north out. We the distant Callahan. We do have a 60 up here in the curve. So we'll have to remember that we got a 60 up here. A little bit of a speed reduction. That's the thing is timing it out. You don't want to be slow like too early. You want to kind of hit it just right. We probably won't be able to do that. So I wouldn't get my hopes up. I wouldn't get my hopes up, but we'll try. Our uh, our speed restriction is going to be right up here. At uh, about those signals there. We only got 15 mile an hour to lose, give or take. And it is gradually coming down. Picket Road. Nice. Please hang it out at the crossing. All right, let's go ahead and grab a little air. Do what she does here. Yeah, she's slowing down. Nice. Go ahead and let go of it. 
If I'll do it for us. <coughs> uh, she's gonna roll through a little bit fast, but I'll be all right with that. Close enough. Amtrak PO 98 has got a clear South Callahan, number two main. 110 North out, 60, almost on the dot. Almost on the dot. I'm feeling pretty confident we might have a successful trip. Amtrak PO 98 has got a clear Callahan, number two main. 110 North out. <laughs> a little fast here. I'd much rather be fast coming out than going in. All right, there we go. We're out of it. Start easing out on the throttle. Next speed restriction is going to be Folkestone. Don't be Folkestone. We do have another train to meet. Another one or two. Yeah, being on this Amtrak train shouldn't be too bad of a trip. We should make really good time on this. <coughs> Got this stupid cough. Wanting to linger this morning, guys. <clears throat> See, that helps. That yeah, should be a bad trip. Uh, freight train wise, Jacks to Folkestone would be a little bit of a trip because most train, like most freights on that route, are going to be kind of draggy anyway, a little bit. Right, there we are back to 79. Yeah, it's way different than a freight though. It's not as leisurely, right? Like on a freight, you just kind of hang out and do your thing. And track PO 98, it's got a clear Little Mills Creek, number two main, 110 north out. Clear signal. And I really, I honestly, I don't know, I don't know how to run like properly run a passenger train. So take it with a grain of salt. Um, I just stretch brake as much as you can, really. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what their doctrine is as far as running. I'd imagine it's probably the same. A lot of stretch braking, try to control the slack and stuff. You don't want the slack running in and out back there because <laughs> you could potentially kill someone or it, at a minimum hurt them. She seems pretty good though. I, I don't like. I don't see much running in and out. I don't feel it as far as like looking at the uh, accelerometer. So I think she's pretty good. All right, now we're coming in these sags. This is the part that's gonna kind of uh, trip me up a little bit here. On a slot freight, you know, really any kind of freight, you just kind of drag, you just kind of like stretch it through here. I'm trying PO 98. It's got a clear dial hill. Number two main 110. Fourth out. Yeah, she seems. It seems like throttle modulation kind of works through there. You're going to get a little fast, but I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. I'll take that. It'll be fine. She is. She's a little rocket. 
It's definitely way different than what I'm used to. It's only a 0.3% grade. It's not a whole lot. It's really not. It's not a whole lot, but it's enough. Yeah, I've never been on an Amtrak train. I've never, I've never, never been on one. So I couldn't tell you what it's like. Leave a comment below if you have been on Amtrak. I, I don't have a problem with Amtrak. I wish we had more passenger service in the United States because I'm just sick and tired of flying. Like flying is such an ordeal now. It's always a huge pain in the butt. I hate flying in, the, you know, like in and out of DFW and Atlanta is like a nightmare. I just absolutely hate it. Uh, Oklahoma City, Amarillo, Birmingham, Alabama, those are great airports. Those are like those are pretty hassle free, but for the most part, flying is just a huge hassle. Amtrak PO98, it's got a clear South Hilliard, number two main, 110 north out. It's a pain. Like it, it just it really is. You're packed out in this little tube. I just I got to where I can't stand it anymore. And Spurs <laughs> always flown uh economy like i've never had the luxury of flying first class so i couldn't tell you what that's like but uh flying nowadays just sucks oh he's got really fast too a little bit 82. lower up a little bit here i pay attention but uh yeah i would do amtrak i absolutely would i would do amtrak even if it took a day or two to get somewhere somewhere you know like when we do a lot of our traveling it takes us two days anyway so i would take a few days to have the luxury to be able to like get up and walk around and like go to the diner or the cafe or lounge or whatever eat when you want go to the bathroom when you want like i would be all about that i really wish uh amtrak would expand their auto train service like to uh more routes in the United States where you just take your car with you. I think that would be awesome. I would be all about it. Absolutely. I, I, I would do it in a heartbeat as long as it's reasonable. Like, it's got to be reasonable, but, um, you know, like, passenger trips back in the 40s i guess like the 40s was the golden age maybe and, and like some of those trains were really luxurious like they were nice nice trains and it's like when you fly on an airplane they throw a pack of peanuts at you and, and prod you in like cattle and then send you on your way amtrak po 98 has got a uh, clear downtown hilliard number two main 110 north out. And it's like one of the last flights I ever had was uh, a direct flight from Oklahoma City to Atlanta, which wasn't bad in itself, like trip wise, but they had us on a CRJ 200, which is like the smallest CRJ you can fly on. And the plane was absolutely packed out. There wasn't an like It was so bad. And we get to atlanta and they're having bad weather and the gates are all jacked up and everything is backed up and they stuck us on this uh taxiway and we sat there for like 30 minutes on the ground waiting to get to the gate and i like oh if, if i spent five more minutes on that airplane sitting on the ground i would have lost it like spur would have lost it i absolutely i <laughs> it was like y'all gotta let me off this airplane now I can't stand it just like sitting there not doing anything and it's like the whole time you're sitting there the plane's like getting smaller and smaller and smaller I'm like no please for God's sakes let us off this airplane I can't do it I can't do it the CRJ's that 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 200 was tiny man it was uh, this was years ago too this I haven't flown in forever like we just drive it's like by the time you have to get up so early to get there early to go through you know tsa and get your bags inspected and and like and you done blown a large majority of your day just flying somewhere so i like you know what just drive like really just just drive like if it's a crazy long trip you know i mean i guess i would fly but 
It's just... It's just not worth it anymore. It's not like what it used to be, that's for sure. One of the best flights I ever had was on uh, AirTran DFW to Atlanta. It was on a DC-9, and there was only 16 people on the entire airplane. Like, I, the plane, like we had the plane to ourselves. That was awesome. I love that. That was a great flying experience, but... Other than that, like, usually it sucks. It really just does. I mean, who really likes, like, I like flying. I like the, like, the act of flying, but... Amtrak PO-98 has got a clear Andrews number two main, 110 north out. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind flying in itself. It's just, uh, being on a little bitty airplane with other people I don't like. I don't care for that. All right, we're doing good. We're making good time. She's not too bad. I kind of... I feel out of my element, but it's not too bad. Go by the uh, blown DD. All right, we got this big sag up here. That's going to be a little bit of a problem. if we can see it a little bit. Yeah, we're not quite into it. We got our next meet up here too, so that's pretty cool. Sweet, no defects, PO98. Came out of the throttle, let her slow up a little bit for this sag here. Then we'll accelerate out of it because you know, you're going into the sag, you're speeding up, and as the head end starts to go up the other side, it's starting to slow down. And your slack's starting to run in on the bottom, especially with a big train, so you gotta kind of like pull out of the sag, so um, it won't be too bad. We're gonna get a little fast on this, but I'll let it ride. It's good straight track. Ain't nothing going to happen here. All right, Coltrane looks good. Look good. Marker's hanging. <coughs> and got a clear Bob alone. Amtrak PO 98, 110 north out. Yeah, these sags, these hogbacks up north of uh, of Callahan, they're pretty extreme. They're pretty good. Back to number two. Numero dos. Uh, so what do we got coming up? We got uh, the St. Mary's Bridge. We've got uh, Folkestone. Folkestone's going to be a slow. Slow order. Yeah, we're going to get a little air here. Let's go ahead and grab a little bit. Because I think we're dropping off down into the river now. Try to get like the least little bit I could get. She just wants to go. And I do use the keyboard. I've had people ask in the, in the past. If I have a rail driver, no, I do not. I don't use rail driver, never have. It's always keyboard. I don't think I would ever get a rail driver. I mean, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I just don't have room for it. I would like a, uh, like a quarter scale upright control stand, I think would be cool. I would go for that. And with 3D printing the way it is now, you could probably make one pretty easy. Like, it probably wouldn't be a big deal to make. Now 
All right, here we go, St. Mary's River. This is the uh, state line between Georgia and Florida. We got our uh, 50 coming up in 2.2. For Folkston. That coal train we met back there is a uh, Bostwick coal train. It's going to be T 108. Damn track PO 98. It's got to clear St. Mary's number two main. 110 north out. Yeah, that was uh, a Boswick coal train. He'll go down to Jack's. We'll make a crew change. Sometimes they park those things over in West Jack's. Like if uh, I remember when I was down there training, if Boswick wasn't taking uh, any trains at the time, they'd park them in West Jack's. Like you could, I, I don't think a lot of people realize. Like you just can't just go up in there anytime you want. Like they have to, they have to take you. They have to uh, be willing to take the train. All right, we got to slow up here. May hit this one a little fast. Nah, it'll be all right. We're good. I just because I, I don't know what to expect, right? <coughs> I'm not used to it. All right, this should be good, pretty good right here. All right, there's our 50 diamond board. A little fast. We'll slow up before we get folks in proper. All right, there we are at 50. Rail plan platform. There they are. Nice. Air track PO ninety eight's got clear, folks, and Number two main. Up in the Huna. 110 north outs. All right, so, uh, all right, there's our resume speed. Count that off. Uh, the accident we talked about, uh, I guess the other week, the head-on collision that they had here at Folkestone, that happened right around this curve here i'd imagine somewhere down in here just past this signal right in there uh so yeah it was a nahuna pig who's supposed to be going this way and somehow he got misrouted during the signal suspension up the jessup and head on into a rock train that was uh sitting there waiting i haven't I haven't heard anything on the condition of the crew. I think they're okay. I mean, I haven't heard bad, so I guess no news is good news, right? But um, I guess they're okay. I hope so, at least. Unfortunate situation. Just, just a brief, like a, a, a brief mistake or mental lapse. Somewhere, someone got their wires crossed. I, I don't know what happened. It, it is pretty obvious they were misrouted. The switch tender misrouted them. I don't know if there was like a breakdown in communication with the dispatcher or if, if someone just forgot or was confused or whatever, I don't know. But uh, either way, all it takes is a brief mental vacation bad things happen. 
All right, let's go with it for a bit. 79 again, and we got our 30 up here at Birch. Amtrak PO 98 has got to approach medium distance to Birch, number two main, 110 north outs. We're going to have to lose about uh, uh, not quite 50 mile an hour. We'll go with it for a little bit here. If you do this enough, you kind of get that muscle memory where you kind of you can just judge. You just know, hey, I need to start slowing down. I'm not really, I'm nowhere near that point. All right, bell it off. Just grab a little air right now. A little bit more. Oh, you need to start slowing down, please. <laughs> she is, but. Like, I may have misjudged that one a little bit. 0.5 miles, we gotta drop 30. Yeah, she's slowing down pretty good now. She'll do it. Oof, we may hit this one a little fast, guys. A little bit, a little bit, let's see. Yeah, hair over. It'd be like 36. All right, now let's come out of the brake. Into the throttle. And we need to count that off. We'll just wait. All right, so we're on the single main. I don't think I called that out when I called the, the signal, but it should have. Number two to single main. There we go. All right, we're clear of it. Now, this is a portion of the route I hardly ever run. Like, I, I don't... I don't hardly ever run this. I really don't. You know, back in the day, there wasn't like a whole heck of a lot of trains that uh, that went through here. It was more, uh, it was more pigs and um, coal trains that came through here down the Nahuna between like uh, Jessup and Folkston. All the manifests went over to uh, Waycross, at least in the early 2000s. Now, a little bit before that, there was one manifest that did come down the Nahuna and that was the uh, R409. I, I want to say, gosh, that, tra that train changed so much over the years. I want to say it was like out of Potomac Yard up there somewhere, and uh, it, it ran down to uh, Tampa. It ran like straight to Tampa, and it always had the, uh, the Tropicana empties on it. Like they would run, uh, they would run the loads up there on the Tropicana train that everyone's familiar with, and then the empties would come back just a little bit at a time on every R four o nine. They would uh, they would come back as they unloaded them, and uh, they would go to Tampa that way. All right, there we go. You guys have to like we're kind of running this by the seat of our pants. I'm not familiar with this like this stretch very good at all. We'll see. So far, so good. So uh, we've got a few sightings before we get up to Jessup. What's our time look like? We're 45 minutes into it. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a long video. A little bit of a long video. Have track PO 98's got a clear 595.7110 north out.
It shouldn't be too hilly through here. I, I wouldn't think it would be. I, I think it would be pretty flat. four <clears throat> percent I guess my allergies are trying to act up this morning it's like we had a bunch of rain the other day I think things are starting to green up a little bit all right I think we're good here we just go with it for a bit Yeah, so uh, coal trains that came down through here. These would be coal trains that were, um, I think, loaded like up in West Virginia in that area. They, they kind of came down this way. Um, <clears throat> coal trains that were uh, loaded on the, like the clinch field could, could come down this way. Uh, I'm trying to think what else could go this way. But usually all your Corbin stuff went down the, the Fitzgerald and on that side. Oh, we got a private room. Private road up here. It's pretty flat. Yeah, definitely not a lot going on grade wise here. It's pretty flat. Come by Newell, the DD up here. Amtrak PO 98 has got a clear Newell 110 North out. Yeah, this isn't this isn't too bad of a trip. This isn't too bad. Part of that Savannah Triangle for the freight side. At least the way I understood it back in the day, they could run like Savannah to Jacksonville, Jacksonville to Waycross, Waycross to Savannah. Like they, they could be going for a while. No defects, PO 98. We haven't even come up to our first siding yet. I know we got some um, some speed restrictions up here at the crossing of the Brunswick sub. I think there's a speed restriction on that. I don't know what it is. I couldn't even I couldn't even tell you where that's at. Is it one of these sidings up here? There's like what three sidings? Um, Nahuna Hortense and I I don't know. Whitaker. Okay, Whitaker is one of them. Can we see both ends? Ah, I can't quite make it out. I thought we could call both ends at once, maybe. Yeah, I just can't make it out. Uh, Amtrak PO 98 Sky Clear South Whitaker. 110 North out. Yeah, I can't, I just, I can't see it at all. Like I see the siding signal, but I can't see the main on this one. I guess blocked by some brush or something. Well, this is super easy running. Like you just put it in number three and let it go.
Let's go out approach medium. Amtrak PO 98 has got to clear North Winnaker. 110 North out. Yeah, there's our signal. We just couldn't see it back there. It's a pretty long siding. What, like 10 or 11,000 feet, maybe? Let's see, what's our Hortense and Broadhurst? Okay, Broadhurst. Nahuna, oh, there's four sidings. Okay, Nahuna, Hortense, and Broadhurst. Okay, yes, yeah, it's gonna take us a little bit to get up here. Oops. Bump the horn there. Man, she's wanting to run. There's a little bit of a sag there. I'm gonna say we run in by the seat of our pants at this point. I don't I don't know this route. I really don't. She seems like she's flying, though. All right, I think we're doing okay. For, uh, for not being experienced with passenger operations and not really knowing a whole lot about it. I did, I did, when I worked for the railroad in real life, I did get to take a passenger train one night. Uh, I got called for a, uh, it was like a, a P001 or a P008 or something like that. It was some weird thing. And I had no clue what it was, like what I got called for it. And so I, I went to, uh, I went, drove to the yard office. It was late at night. It was like midnight. And um, got there and the train was sitting out front and it was two of the uh, F40 PHs, the CSX ones, and uh, two passenger cars. It had a CSX passenger car and it had a North Carolina State DOT car. It was yellow. I remember that. And uh, both of them were going to Chicago for some reason. I have no clue, like, what that move was about or what they were doing. I was just a peon, right? <laughs> it's just taking the train where I'm told. So, uh, I go in the yard office and, um, back lots. Okay. Amtrak PO 98 has got a clear back lot, 110 North out. Interesting name. So I go in the yard office and I, I call up the dispatcher and um, I said, yeah, this is a crew, this conductor for PO90 or P, P008. Do we have any riders? Cause I didn't know, like, I'd kind of like to know if there's someone back there or not, you know? And um, he's like, I'm honestly not sure let me let you talk to the, the chief. So he sent me to the chief. I talked to him. I was like, is there any, any riders on this P008 or whatever it was? He said, no riders, you're good to go. I said, okay. So being two F40s and two passenger cars, that thing would get like a scalded dog, like unlike any train I had ever been on in my life. Like we had several stretches of like 50 mile an hour, like maximum authorized speed for that route was 50 mile an hour. And, um, but there were a lot of stretches that you never saw 50 where you could do 50 because of the length of the train. It's like you were hanging out in a speed restriction and by the time you got out of it, you were in another one. So it didn't really like, it never panned out. But that little four car train, like two engines and two cars, I saw 50 on that railroad that I never saw before again in different spots. Man, we would come out of a speed restriction. I don't care if it was a stretch of one mile at 50 mile an hour. <laughs> We'd wipe that throttle and it was gone. 
she would go. And, and because we didn't, we thought we didn't have any riders, we were a little rough with it. Like we come into a speed restriction, my engineer would jam on that dynamic and just like standing you on your head, you know? And then when we'd come out of the speed restriction, wipe the throttle, she'd take off. Amtrak PO98, it's got a clear Hickox. 110 North out. Man, I'm seeing signals. I Like I said, I don't know anything about this stuff. Um, so we're pretty rough with it. We got her across 201 miles of railroad in five and a half hours. This is the best trip I ever had on any train ever. Next best trip was six hours. So we did really good on that one. And we went in the hole one time. We met uh, Q121, which was the big, uh, the really super hot Chicago to Jacksonville pig. We met him. But other than that, it was all greens and we ran that thing like no tomorrow. And so we get to, uh, we got to Birmingham and I handed the, the train off to the outbound crew. They asked, said, you got any riders? I said, they told us no riders. I talked to the chief, said no riders. But okay. So we go on back south on our next train the next day. And somehow I met back up with that crew like a few days later. The Nashville crew that took it up to Nashville. And uh, they were like, yeah, you had a rider back there. We had a rider. They told us no riders, but there was actually an escort on the train. There was someone escorting it to Chicago. <coughs> someone on it. Had no clue. Had no. They told us, like I specifically asked, do we have a rider? Because what if something had happened and we derailed? Would you know, like, I wouldn't have gone back there and checked. They told us there was no one back there, so I would have never gone back there. But, uh, yeah, we did have a rider. They're like, yeah, you had a rider. And I was like, oh, no. I was like, did he complain about his trip? Because we were rough with it. We did not run that train like a passenger train because we didn't think there was anyone back there to worry about. And, uh... They're like, no, he's like, I saw him back there. He's like, I had to walk back on the train. He said, I saw him back there. He was in a window, staying in a window. He was back there washing dishes. He just ate and uh, he rode in the cab with a Nashville crew uh, on their portion of the trip. I guess it was safer and easier to ride up there with him than it was, <laughs> it was back there on those cars. So I was like, oh no. But yeah, that's like, that's my only experience with passenger trains ever it was very brief and limited all right we got our our 60 up here i think it's the crossing with the brunswick brunswick sub yeah okay and track po 98 has got clear north end of the junta 110 north out i don't know if i called that other signal or not She's actually, she slowed up a good bit through here. She slowed up more than what I thought she would. Robin Lane. We've got another meet somewhere. I don't know where it's going to come up, but I know there's someone out there. Yeah, there's definitely, there's someone out there. That's turned out to be a little longer than what I thought it would be. There's a lot more track between, <laughs> between Folkston and Jessup than I anticipated. Yeah, we're good on our speed. Got to clear. This is an interesting location because they got a really big block here on the OS because of the uh, of the diamond. There's our speed restriction. Yeah, ooh, a little rough.
Need to replace that diamond. It's a little bit rough through there. All right, back to 79. 79 mile an hour running. Yeah, we'll probably end this in Jessup. It's taking a little longer than what I thought it would. It's already, we're already sitting at an hour. the story was on that North Carolina DOT car that we had I want to say it was on the bottom and it was like an observation like kind of an observation deal maybe I, it's been so long that's like 20 years ago over This is needless to say, it was an interesting trip. It, it was one of the better ones I had. And the F40s were super cool. They were really cool to ride in, but they rode like a wagon. They were really rough. Any four axle, like any four axle at line speed is going to run rough. Amtrak PO98, Scott Clear, Harris, 110 North outs. Any four axle, I never rode on any four axle that rode good. They always rode like crap. A little hilly up through here. He yeah, has a few hogbacks. I couldn't imagine doing 79 mile an hour. 60, like 60 is the fastest I ever went. And that seemed pretty dang fast. Man, right, come by Raven Road here. Track PO 98 Scott Clear 572.0 110 North out and by the intermediate and the DD here. That DD should be sounding off in a second. At the grass between the rails, right? Some of the prettiest, greenest grass I ever saw was between the rails. <laughs> I guess it's like maybe spill fertilizer or something would green it up. <laughs> I've seen some really, some really nice grass <laughs> between the rails, though. She's slowing up on us. A little bit of a grade here. Uh, some kind of a bridge up here. No clue where that other train's at. I'm kind of at a loss now. There's one more we're supposed to be meeting. You gotta meet a pig. And 
and I have no clue where he's at. Oh, approach medium. Nice. Okay. They, uh, there's our meat right there. Amtrak PO 98 Sky Approach Medium Satilla 110 North out. Nice. Yeah, there's our meat. They're putting us in a hole. There's our signal right up there. Yeah, there he is. There he is. He's sitting waiting on us. That little air. All right, keep bailing it off. See how this does for us. A little over a mile away. I think we're fine. Surprised they didn't put him in the hole. We could just zip right on by him, no problem. All right, so meet at Hortense. We got uh, Hortense and then Broadhurst and then we get back to the double main for Jessup. Pretty cool. We got some old signals up there. I like the signals in Jessup. The uh, the single bridge and stuff. So that old school stuff I'm all about. I've tried PO98. It's got a medium... A limited clear. Huh. No, medium approach medium. Okay, now I can see it. Medium approach medium. Into the siding at Hortense. 110 north out. Okay, yeah, that threw me off for a second. I thought it was a medium approach at first because it was kind of blocked out. And then I saw that flashing green. I was like, wait a minute, just upgrade to a limited? That's not, that shouldn't be right. It gave us a medium approach medium. So we've kind of talked about those before. Like all the sidings that we had on the lineable side, you get a medium in and a medium out because the siding was only good for 30. Um, sometimes the switch was only good for 25. Like the siding might be good for 30, but the switch was good for 25. So you get a medium in and a medium out with a speed restriction on the switch for 25. Uh, back in the day when they originally, I, I guess they did it on the Amtrak route, they would give a medium approach medium. So you get the medium approach medium in and then a medium out. Kind of redundant, like it's a lot more extra signaling, right? For the same thing, but. All right, this is the uh, U-173. <clears throat> I think he's... Uh, Kearney, New Jersey to uh, Jacksonville, so pretty hot pig. Old school pig. All right, so we got a medium approach, medium in. It means we're gonna have a medium out up here. Yes, we do. We got our medium clear out. Damn track, PO 98. It's got a medium clear out of the siding. North end of, where are we at? I can't even remember anymore. Where, where are we at? <laughs> Where are we at? I don't know what the siding is. I forgot. Hortense. There you go. Hortense. Amtrak PO 98. Sky beam clear out of the siding. North end of Hortense. 110 north out.
If you blast through this crossing, right? We know it's blocked, but you never know. Someone might try to crawl in between. Pretty decent sized pig with all the old UPS trailers in it. All right, 173 train looks good. Marker's hanging. Oh, this 30 seems so slow since we've been doing 79 for so long. All right, so this is Hortense. We got Broadhurst and then we'll be at Jessup. So yeah, we still probably got another 20 minutes of running. Give or take. She don't want to run a little fast on us. I hate to grab, uh, I hate to grab some air right here. We may just do some dynamic. Now this is the first time I've touched the dynamic the whole time. Probably with this passenger train, I should have used dynamic more. It's just old habits die hard, right? There we go, she slowed up nice for us. I think we start pulling on her now. All right, medium clear. count it off maybe back to 79 and i think our next speed restriction is that curve up it's um up at jessup maybe only one i can think of off the top of my head there may be more but all i can think of all right there we go we're out of the speed restriction go ahead and open up for a little bit Well, at least we finally had our meat. I was wondering, I, I was starting to kind of wonder if something was wrong. So he'd go to Jack's ramp. And I want to say back in the day, the 173 was one of the trains that he wouldn't go in at Dinsmore. He would go to Moncrief. He would set out the FEC cut there. If, if they had an FC, FEC cut, he would set it out there like a Miami cut or something. And then they would go around honeymoon Y and back around that way. All right, let's go ahead and open her up. I think it's the first time I've seen eight the whole time, maybe. <laughs> maybe. All right, I should be good there. We'll kind of hang out in number four, four bit. Go to three. Yeah, it's kind of nice being on a train. It'll get up and go, but it's not so draggy. Usually they're always, your freight stuff is going to be so draggy. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, 
Hey, we're trying P098, it's got to clear McKinnon. 110 north out. And there was nothing, nothing sucked worse than being on a pig that was draggy, like a train that is supposed to be able to go, but just drags, like just drags everywhere. Like you can barely get up to line speed on it. It just, it just doesn't want to go. We'll hang out here. All right, so I guess our uh, our next light's going to be Broadhurst because that distant back there was a double head. It'd be nice if it was Broadhurst. Yep, it is. Sweet. So not a very long block between uh, Hortense and Broadhurst. Finland Street in Georgia. All right, so we got Broadhurst and then Jessup. Jessup, we got our uh, slow order for the curve. I want to say it's 50. Maybe. And then uh, we'll have our station stop. We have track PO 98. It's got a clear south route here, 110 north out. We can see the north. Yeah, I just can't see it. I wish the um, the signal, the the light, the lighting effect was just a little bit more prevalent. I don't know. You know, some signals in real life were kind of hard to read too. They uh, they weren't the easiest. I remember one in particular. It was always hard to tell if it was an approach or a, a stop. I don't know what it was about that light, but it was always really, really hard to tell, like to uh, differentiate between the two for some reason. You think it would be easy, right? Like red is red, yellow is yellow, but it was like just something about that light. I got clear. I have track PO 98. It's got a clear north uh, Broadhurst 110 north out. All right, let's see how far we are from Jessup. Hopefully it's not too far. Some of those concrete ties up here. Man, I love it. They uh, they label these crossings. It, it just it gives you it gives you a sense of a bigger world somehow. Just seeing the crowd like that one was private, but just kind of knowing. Here our time looks like here. Burr has a lunch date in a bit, so we gotta <laughs> we gotta get to Jessup. Gotta hurry up and get to Jessup. We got plenty of time. We'll make it, but can't uh, 
Can't be dinking around. We got to get up there. Is this a bridge or a crossing? It looks like it's a bridge, I think. Sometimes they're, they're hard to tell. They have track PO 98's got a clear triple nickel. 110 North out. That's a cool name. I like that. Makes me think of the F-16s based out of Aviano in Italy. They're triple nickel. That's uh that squadron. Yeah, that's kind of a long block. It's going to be a little ways between uh, Broadhurst and Jessup. Definitely not a short block. So what do you guys think? Are you uh, are you Amtrak? Are you freight? I just I like the challenge of freight. I really do. I like the challenge of it. Trying to. Uh, work the train keep it in one piece get it stopped get it going that sort of thing is just something uh very satisfying about handling a heavy tonnage train all right this little <laughs> this little eight car passenger train. i think it's eight cars right is it eight uh what is it yeah, eight cars and uh, two engines. It's like easy mode. Like if you run it enough and kind of uh, get the muscle memory down as far as like how she breaks and how soon she does and all that sort of stuff. Amtrak PO 98 has got to clear by leak. 110 north out. Yeah, once you kind of get it down as far as like how she responds, it's pretty easy. We need a, a passenger comfort meter <laughs> to tell us what's going on. <coughs> what's that add on for Microsoft that you can get for your airliner where like if you start doing crazy stuff, the people start screaming, <laughs> start screaming and yelling and stuff like they'll start carrying on. That would be hilarious. I would I would totally do that. I would totally do that. All right, we got 33 miles. So this is Jessup coming up. We can't forget to stop. Muy importante that we stop at Jessup. That would be so nice. Just have a station in your town. Be like, you know what? I'm going to go to Florida for the weekend. Let's go. That would, that would be nice. I would like that. Yeah, approach medium. Okay. That's cool. They ran us up the, the number one main, so that's good. Airtrack PO 98 has got approach medium south Jessup 110 or actually single main to number one 110 north out and no defects is that us was that us was, is that our duty yes are you kidding me I thought that was crossing just a shadow. Are you kidding me? We got dragging. Oh, come on. Come on. What are the odds? Like, seriously, what are the odds? You know what? We're going with it. I'm not stopping for that. <laughs> this is going to be a major FRA infraction, but you know what? We're almost there. I'm not stopping for that. No, I'm, I'm not. That's kind of like, no. 
What are you? I, I say it. I've said it a bazillion times. I still say it. I get hit by a defect detector and run eight way more than I ever did in real life. I, I don't know why. I, I, I don't know why, but yeah, I do. I get hit all the time, and that completely jacked me up for our 30 up here. Yeah, we're going to hit this fast as hell. Yep, there you go. Oh, that completely jacked me up. Medium clear. They have track field 98, medium clear, Jessup. Number one main and number one main. <laughs> yeah, we hit that way fast. You know what? You can't win them all. You can't win them all. Pretty cool, though, with the signal bridges. Though. I love the signal bridges. All right, there's our resume speed. We got to stop up here anyway. Man, that, that dragon equipment just ruined my whole trip. Like, it really just did. It ruined my whole... Like, are you kidding me? They get popped by the DD on a passenger. Like... Ugh. And here's our stop. I got to get used to using the dynamic more on this thing. Like, I really should. Yeah, I really should. Oh, crap. I think we just went right through it, right? Our bottom sh should be about that. about the uh, road crossing back there maybe <laughs> we'll see <laughs> we'll see oh man when it rains it pours right when it rains it pours uh, a little bit by but it's okay they can walk they can get up here they can hop on the bottom here and then just walk right up the train like no problem right they <laughs> can just go this way <laughs> Oh man, if you want to see Spur get totally jacked up on his trip, like no tomorrow, hit me with a defect detector. Well, I'm not like, I totally wasn't expecting that on the, uh, <laughs> on the passenger train. What the heck, really? Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this one. I hope y'all enjoyed. Be sure to hit that like, subscribe, ring that bell, leave me comments, and uh, we'll catch you on the rails next time. Peace. No, big cat. No. <laughs> Day ever.